Welcome to uh, this video where we will look at chapter 4 of traffic and safety analysis man uh, procedure manual TSAP traffic and safety analysis procedure manual by TxDOT in this chapter we will look at uh, tools uh, measure of effectiveness and uh, introduction to methodologies since uh, tools selections and methodologies methodology selection so tools and approach selection uh, heavily dictates fee and scope this chapter is very important uh, to figure out the time and budget needed for traffic project traffic task which will be done as a part of project so fee and scope time and budget so chapter 4 is more applicable at the beginning of project so typically when we work um, there is a stage where which we call fee and scope that is before the contract or project has started or notice to proceed has happened and then the actual work. So chapter 1 which is uh, project scoping is related to fee and scope and chapter 4 the selection of tools is also related to fee and scope where we are trying to set the fee and scope and methodology so after fee and scope come methodology menu and uh, data collection methodology memo and data collection so it will also help us to write the methodology memo but uh, but the importance of chapter 4 comes from the fact that it defines how much fee uh, and budget we are going to have what is in the scope and to meet the requirement of TSAP manual. So the tools, methodologies and measure of effectiveness used to analyze roadway facilities have critical impact on decision making and perceived performance. As such, it is suggested that selection of tools, methodology and MOS be carefully considered. Uh, additional information about the analysis methodolo methodology tools and MOEs can be found in appendix. So appendix has some further information. Purpose and use. So the purpose of this uh, chapter is to provide guidance on selection of tools, methodologies and MOE. However, it does not tell us the exact guidance on how to, uh, how to apply on this tool. So this chapter is focused on tool selection. And then further chapters are based on tool usage guidance. However, none of the chapters go through how to use the tools, which we will cover under a different uh, different video series. How to exactly use the tools is not the purpose of this manual so tool uses guidance are covered in further chapters and tool selection is covered into chap in chapter 4 so we will focus on this uh, tool selection part under this chapter uh, before um, moving forward uh, we will look at project development stage so this is something important a uh, text dot project has a uh, four uh, four development stages. First one is planning. I will change the color here. So stage one is planning, where we do high level analysis. After planning, um, based on the guidance, there is preliminary schematic or conceptual schematic. Preliminary schematic, or also uh, alternate analy alternative analysis. Then we have a detailed or advanced schematic. After schematic is done, then we do PSNE project specification and estimates. PS and E. After PSNE plans are done, then it is sent to construction. And during construction, if there are changes to plans, then those are recorded in a as built. 
so these are different stages of a, a transportation project where it starts from planning at a high level then it goes to through preliminary schematic then detailed schematic then psna then construction and as built so all those details are covered here the general impact of uh, project development stage on tool selection is shown in figure 41 uh, which i believe is on next page so if we are in a planning stage uh, we typically use spreadsheet based tools then between planning and preliminary we can use travel demand model and hcm and at advanced stages we will use micro simulation So first one is planning stage. Planning is stage is when we uh, when we typically look at multiple route options, alternative for a larger reason. So in planning stage, our text dot planning projects are divided primarily into three categories. One are route studies. And then corridor analysis, corridor studies, and then feasibility studies. These three are planning projects. A planning analysis is typically a low detailed analysis uh, applied to the project at an early development stage. While a planning stage analysis is low detail, it's uses the accurate data as much as possible so usually for planning stage the software we use is highway capacity manual sometimes synchro for intersections and uh, spreadsheets there are a lot of spreadsheets which are available from fswa and uh, a lot of consultants have their own spreadsheet calculation spreadsheets uh, such as capex and uh, several capacity spreadsheets. So these are planning level analysis. And um, this section goes through detail of what planning level analysis are and what they do. Second one is preliminary schematic stage. Uh, so preliminary schematic stage analysis is a medium detail analysis applied to project at the middle development stage. So at this stage, we are looking for coming up with uh, different alternatives different at planning level also we have different alternatives however those alternatives are more fixed at uh, preliminary schematics so usually different alternatives usually four i would say four to six or maybe uh, in general we have two to five alternatives but four to six may be a good number uh, num in terms of number of alternatives we look at at planning stage we look somewhere between 5 to 10 alternatives and as sch preliminary schematic we are looking to 2 to 4 uh, 2 to 4 alternatives to see whether those alternatives work would work based on uh, based on planning level schematics then the, then the next step is final or final or approved schematic at this level we look like uh, two alternatives two to four alternatives and these are actual schematic so these are actual schematic which is very well known in the industry um, schematic projects are deliverable at 30 percent 60 percent 90 percent and 100 uh, percent schematic projects are well known um, those are roadway schematic projects majority of because of the complexity involved uh, if we look at number of transportation projects so let's say we look at planning projects uh, preliminary schematic then schematic then psne psne takes us most number of hours to perform the analysis then followed by schematic then followed by preliminary then planning so for let's say we are looking at a corridor the planning can be done faster 
compared to preliminary schematic which is done little bit takes more time than schematic which takes more time and PSNE takes the highest amount of time so at a given time most of the projects that we work on are PSNE projects because it takes a long time just to complete one corridor followed by schematic projects so PSNE projects are well known in the industry followed by schematic then preliminary schematic and plannings are little bit specialized another concept here is a multi-stage analysis multi-stage analysis is when we combine these four planning for planning preliminary schematics schematic and PSNE uh, to do uh, when we combine them together several times we need to perform the analysis from planning uh, to schematic or there can be several steps to it for example if we are looking at an intersection analysis then we would be maybe working on the planning level we may be using capex to do planning study and present the results to client which is text dot so let's say we present the results to text dot and text dot has selected few alternatives then we can take it to detail analysis in synchro and the present the results to text dot which would uh, give their feedback and refine the alternatives then we will take it to Wisim and finalize the result and then help uh, text dot select us one or more alternatives so this is a example of multi-stage analysis where we are doing several stages so using uh, usually capex is used at planning stage synchro is used at preliminary schematic of the same is used at schematic level so we are doing all of the tasks uh, there are several projects that requires us to look from planning planning perspective then go up to up to this uh, schematic support so that's the multi-stage uh, analysis then we have multi-resolution modeling that involves tools with different traffic analysis resolutions um, sketch level SCM based in this manual highway capacity SCM based tools which is highway capacity software are called mesoscopic it could include ex assessing a sketch level or macroscopic trip table to determine overall trip pattern it could also include scm based mesoscopic analysis to understand the impact of mitigating strategies at a lane by lane level lastly in a multi-stage analysis could potentially include micro simulation analysis of individual driving behavior and impact of traffic control strategies so multi-stage analysis are some specific projects where we go where we do the planning and schematic or where we use the high level tools and detail level tools within the same project and it's not uncommon uh, there are several projects where we go from high level analysis to detail analysis so it's, it's, uh, it's quite common to have multi-stage analysis in traffic operations now within multi-stage analysis one approach would be to take the macroscopic models which are travel demand models then feed them to highway capacity manual based tools which is highway capacity software and synchro let's say and then it feed it to microscope micro simulation so this will be called full resolution models and there can be partial resolution models where the travel demand model output can directly be fed into uh, micro simulation and skip this one a uh, majority of project we work or or the travel demand model or uh, future forecast can be fed directly to highway capacity manual uh, this would be a little bit higher stage so majority of project are either in this category or full resolution usually if, if we are looking uh, it's, it's very rare that we would take the high level analysis and directly feed into a micro simulation so this is a little bit rare, rare or I would say less frequent rare is too strong I guess less frequent is better and these are 
these are the typical analysis so if you are looking at a higher level studying higher level studies uh, especially up to preliminary schematic so planning and preliminary in planning we just we can just stop at travel demand model but preliminary schematic we can do uh, highway capacity manual based analysis and when we are doing schematic project we use the full multi resolutions model where we do the travel demand model then feed them in SCS and synchro and then we feed them in micro simulation models just to remember that micro simulation is an expensive task so it's better to feed them into mesoscopic models which is HSM based let's say SCM synchro and then uh, when we feed them in um, mesoscopic model we can get some high level results uh, pretty fast uh, so we can avoid a lot of hit and trial at micro micro simulation stages Uh, the, the next section is very very important one uh, which is analysis tool description and selection methodology so this is the main guidance of chapter 4 there are several guidance in chapter 4 and this is one of the main ones we will try to go through this guidance line by line so analysis tools are typically selected based on the tool's ability to satisfy the project needs and the purpose as well as project specific constraints for example project objectives traffic operational conditions complexity of geometries measure of effectiveness availability of data level of effort budget and scaling so these are many factors that affects the selection of tools the analysis tool selection process a flowchart which graphically demonstrate tool selection methodology is provided in appendix e so this tool chart is very very important guidance so i should first mention that this appendix e section 2 is an important guidance upon appendix e section 2 is an important guidance uh, because it helps us in tool selection based on uh, different typical uh, typical project types and stuff uh, also we needed to develop the fee and scope and get an idea of how the how the work will be done so it gives an idea of scope fee and approach So we will look at this appendix E section 2 more carefully now. So I will switch to appendix E So within the appendix on page number E3 and page 33 of the PDF E3 this is the tool selection uh, process which, which is important so we can spend some time on it. So the tool selection depends on the type of project uh, it says start here so first select the project type there are four type of projects planning studies preliminary schematic full psne and uh, independent operational analysis project that are not uncommon these are also pretty common to have standalone operational analysis project or operational analysis focused projects so this is uh, preliminary or actual full schematic so this is planning studies preliminary or actual schematic full escape uh, full design which is PSNE project specification and estimates and operational analysis next we have facility type so in facility type based on highway capacity manual we we need to have arterial need to have a two-lane highway two-lane highway we have multi-lane highway and then we have freeways um, and these are the major ones and within each we have a rural versus urban so rural and urban except arterial which is primarily in the urban area but can exist in rural as well so facility type facility type we have freeways or alternative intersections rural highways 
an urban street or this is arterial then we have saturation level saturation level we have discussed before it can be under saturated and over saturated over saturated condition occurs when uh, volume demand exceeds the capacity or there is a bottleneck spillback bottleneck spillback for whatever reason uh, maybe the, there is a congestion spillback from intersection so demand doesn't necessarily needs to be greater than capacity but there may be just some signals or there may be accidents or maybe there is some weather conditions so these are these are factors that causes oversaturated undersaturated is when vehicles are not significantly getting uh, blocked so oversaturated condition usually is for level of service f although level of service e is not acceptable when we go to level of service f is usually enters the oversaturation conditions now these are the analysis category and these are the tool examples to use so we'll start here for planning projects we can directly go here and use the planning tools which are sketch level planning tools travel demand models the sketch planning tools are capex and spreadsheets so spreadsheet based tools and capex are spread planning tools then we have travel demand models which are built in transcat and cube and dynast is a dta dta based uh, dynast is dta based uh, planning tool macroscopic simulation and mesoscopic simulation for planning studies i have also seen the use of scs but we can skip it based on spreadsheet based calculations and then we have the schematic so if the schematic is related to freeway then the guidance actually there needs to be a line here in the revised version so the guidance is to uh, go here then go here and use the micro simulation so if you are working on schematic the guidance is to use the micro simulation tools and uh, if it's not uh, if it's not freeway then we can look at whether it's under saturated if it's under saturated then we can use scm based tools have a capacity manual based tool if it's over saturated anytime it goes over in over saturation only micro simulations can handle it so there is micro simulation tools for full psne designs if it's a rural highway then we can uh, use analytics tools and anything else for example if it's urban or if it's a freeway then we we need to use micro simulation tools for operational analysis if it's urban street and is over saturated then we can go to mic mic micro simulation tool however if it's under saturated then we can use traffic optimization tools which is synchro synchro is most commonly used um, optimization tool but there are new tools coming up like parsers and uh, tspp draft i have not heard about this one but i have seen par Passers. As of now, the primary optimization tool we uh, typically use is Synchro for arterial analysis. Now um, we can notice that at schematic level, which we typically work for freeways, um, it seems that it's a uh, it's recommending a micro simulation now. There are guidance within micro simulation, uh, which we will see very soon. Uh, some introduction to guidance or to follow FSWA guidelines um, for 2019, which can drive the budget very high. I should put dollar signs. So we will discuss a little bit about um, when we work with micro simulation uh, is much higher than typical micro sim simulation in past so we will look at this one let's switch back to original um, manual so this is appendix i believe e 
appendix E. Section 2. So we are at section 2 of appendix E. So we'll switch back to our actual manual now. And we were here. So the traffic analysis tool selection process is kind of uh, one of the main contribution and main guidance of the of this TSAP manual and is uh, I, I believe will be used in almost every project so this will be frequently used used guidance for future we do not have any flowchart like this as of now so we believe as the manual um, manual is more frequently used and that this particular guidance of using appendix a section 2 will be more used uh, in future it is recommended that the user review the append appended methodology and consider project specific constraint as well as local preference before selecting the analysis tools generally based on the appended tool selection methodology the analysis stage and project facility type are used to inform the uh, selection of analysis tools are these are just uh, describing uh, some of the things to remember all tools discussed in this chapter are examples of software by industry expert and do not reflect the preference of TechStart, which is the main disclaimer of the tsap manual uh, we discussed at the beginning of project that listed softwares are what we currently use and are subject to change those are not preference if we think some other software can handle the project better we can recommend some other softwares so table 4.41 is fsw analysis tool volume 2 need an analysis tool method so there are different needs based on uh, what based on that what tools we can select so we typically have an idea in industry on what tools we need to select so we'll skip uh, 4.1 next uh, there are series of information on different softwares uh, we, which we will skip so there is capex which is developed by fswa and it's a spreadsheet to look at innovative intersections so capex looks at innovative intersections and intersection changes and then we have travel demand models which are typically done in transcat cube or visum like we have discussed uh, in great detail in one of the videos then we have dynast dynast is a mesoscopic dynamic traffic assignment tool then one of the pretty powerful one is uh, using highway capacity manual and highway capacity software developed by MacTrans. And highway capacity software kind of takes the input and gives us uh, follows the SCM guidelines and gives us the level of service directly. And uh, it's it's pretty useful tool in terms of the input and calculations. Uh, it's a very useful tool and one of the most frequently used tools. In traffic operation is highway capacity software then for uh, intersections our two go software after capex so first we use capex to figure out innovative intersections and after capex um, it, it, capex can also do standard intersection at a higher level but to go software um, to handle intersections is synchro synchro is vastly used for intersection and signal design intersection evaluation and signal signal timings we will look at great detail about synchro in one of the videos on how to work with synchro and uh, many other things about synchro Cedra is mostly used for roundabouts freewall 
is a FSWA software uh, which is primarily used for reliability analysis. It's a pretty powerful software but requires extensive data set which is difficult to come by for most of the projects. Freewall is a very powerful software to do reliability analysis which is one of the measure of effectiveness listed in the manual and workshop presentation. However, uh, reliability re is uh, very difficult to calculate uh, because of the data needs and uh, has limited use in as of now because of uh, heavy data requirement heavy data requirements and we are looking forward to see free wall our reliability based tools getting used more Vsim is our uh, main uh, to go software for the micro simulation modeling similar to Visim there is Corsim Visim is developed by PTV Corsim is developed by Mactrans well, Corsim used to be used in past a lot because of its simplicity and less burden on user less burden on user learning so a lot of good things uh, which we need for micro simulation has been already thought through and are embedded in Corsim so personally uh, when we were working with Corsim we liked Corsim a lot but uh, because of the graphics and many other things uh, its uses uses has been very limited nowadays however uh, in terms of algorithms and uh, building model building models without fatal flaws It's very easy to build models within Corsim. It doesn't have fatal flaw as compared to other software, which gives thousands of options and uh, kind of uh, Corsim is something. So let's say many there are many micro simulation software. For example, there is Visim, there is Transcad, and they have hundreds of options. Whereas Corsim, the good thing about Corsim was it tells you what the exact right answer you are looking for so very few options and those it, it takes out the user user decisions and they, uh, it it enables the user to kind of for example let's say we are doing routing so there are hundreds of ways of doing it but some of them are correct so Corsim figure out uh, what is the right way of doing things and it gives you options that are only the right way so that's why uh, many in industry uh, still love and used to love Corsim, but its use has been declining uh, over past several five to ten years. Then one thing that is not listed here is Transcad, but then there is Sim Traffic, which is embedded within Synchro. So Synchro uh, can uh, we can run Sim Traffic through Synchro. Whereas Synchro is a static software, sim traffic is a little bit dynamic where we can see vehicle moving and it requires a little bit. Of, it's not as extensive as Visim or CoreSim, but it requires some calibration. Analysis tools evaluation. So after after using Appendix E Section 2, which we have already looked through, um, traffic analysis tool selection, uh, some project constraint may 
may ask us to change the tools those those are project complexity schedule and budget analysis tool limitations provided in table 4 to are described in terms of complexity data requirement each criteria is classified as, as either low medium or high for example let's say we want to work on wisim project but we do not have data then we cannot use wisim so this section goes through a situations where we are constrained by budget or whether we are constrained by data and complexity of projects then we need to switch the tools and this decisions needs to be recorded in scoping form so scoping form and methodology memo methodology memo so this decisions of not using that flow chart and uh, not using the recommended tool uh, needs to be documented and get approved by uh, techstar so these are analysis tools limitations on data requirement complexity and time it takes like we can see here um, the time and complexity and data requirements are very high actually this time which is 5x will actually go up in future because of the same same with core same any kind of micro simulation will require more time and budget now because of the new guidelines from fswa 2019 guidelines which asks us to calibrate to 15 minutes calibrate to 15 minutes we will look at greater detail of this guidance in uh, a further part of the manual but the, some of the important changes between fswa traditional approach released in 2004 and 2019 is calibrating it to 15 minutes which will become challenging then there is cluster analysis so instead of looking at one typical day now we need to look at multiple days within the clusters so let's say typically we used to look at am plus pn this is our existing micro simulation model but now we will be looking at cluster 1 am and pm cluster 2 am and pm similarly so let's say we have six clusters so our budget needs to go up by 6% so with the new guidelines the complexity is 5 and let's say we have five clusters then this will become 25 times and this will become 20 times more time and budget complex complexity so the new so the micro simulation in itself is very time intensive on top of that uh, following the new guidelines will make it i will believe let's say five at least five times more expensive than what it traditionally used to be then we have uh, uh, some general discussions uh, these are some limitations of deterministic tools um, which we need to know and i think most of the engineers know so no need to just uh, go through it is is kind of very generic information then level of effort so this is an important discussion of level of effort because it tells us what is the time and budget needs level of effort refers to duration necessary for model development and applications Table four three estimates level of effort in terms of ranges of percentage by task for micro simulation. So in table four three, if we are working on uh, micro simulation projects, these are the different categories of work that we need to do, and these are the different type of project, which are small projects, medium projects, and large projects. So for medium projects, majority of uh, task. comes under alternative analysis for small project also majority of task comes under alternative analysis uh, whereas uh, for large projects base model development and calibration plays a little bit bigger role so overall uh, e- e- even if the percentage increase has uh, percentage has gone down since the large pro- budget projects are very high budget this 23 25 to 30 percent is very high. is a significantly high number then we have the complexity 
then we have the data requirement uh, this is an important discussion 4.4.5 data requirements vary by project type analysis tool and selected measure of effectiveness review chapter 2 for detailed information on requirements now this line is pretty important in this manual fswa traffic analysis toolbox volume 3 2004 guidance may be followed for text or project that do not involve fswa approval which is typically non iajr projects uh, average day traffic analysis may be performed for these projects follow fswa traffic analysis toolbox 3 2019 guidance for the project that involves the interstate interstate access justification report so a, a very very important um, guidance here is if we are working on text dot project then we need to look at whether fswa is involved if fswa is not involved if fswa is not involved it is a non-interstate projects typically in the approval process then we can use fhwa 2004 guidance but if uh, if it's an interstate project and fhwa is an stakeholder so for interstate then we need to follow fhwa 2019 guidance this is a major very big change between following 2004 and 2019 because of cluster analysis cluster analysis and calibration requirements so in general the calibration requirement has become more strict um, instead of selecting uh, average of two typical day two typical days in 2004 manual now in 2019 manual we we, we need to pick a representative day and instead of running with several simulation run so usually we have 10 runs we we need to use one seed for calibration so selecting one uh, representative day for that representative day we need to uh, calibrate the volume in 15 minute interval 15 minute interval as compared to one year one hour interval which we typically used to do based on 2004 guideline so some of the calibration efforts will go up because of the using the 15 minute interval and then on top of that um, a typical am and pm analysis will be broken into many many analysis so between 2019 we'll need extensive data collection fswa 2019 guidance will need extensive data collection as compared to what we need to do in past um, extensive calibration which is calibration to 15 minute volume and then on top of that we need cluster analysis so typical uh, in 2014 this is 29 uh, sorry 2004 this is fswa guidelines so in 2004 we used to calibrate or build model for am plus pm but now we need to look at different cluster and then cluster one then there will be am and pm models for represented area then we have cluster two then we will have am and pm models so let's say a typical project takes us 200,000 for micro simulation now because of this cluster and many other things from 200,000 it will likely cost us 1.2 million or more even so there is a big big implication on changing from 
Federal Highway Guideline to 200, uh, 2004 to 2019, which we'll discuss in much, much detail, uh, which is available in the manual uh, in terms of time and budget, which we need to remember. So we will discuss the details, the guidelines, details of guidelines in further chapter in the chapter of micro simulation however we need to remember there is a major consequences on the time and budget needed uh, if, if we want to follow the new guidelines so it is important to remember at the project and budget uh, when we are trying to decide the project and budget measure of effectiveness has kind of is the same measure of effectiveness we have traditionally used uh, besides the one which is reliability reliability is very tricky measure of effectiveness can be handled by free wall also can be handled by hcs which comes with reliability tools now also in some sense can be handled with vsim and corsim by developing clusters by using the cluster analysis on new guidance we can handle reliability with vsim corsim hcs and a free wall which is mentioned here reliability requires extensive data collection extensive data collection and typically we need to have 365 days of data days of traffic uh, in uh, weather and incident data and many other things so reliability is a little bit tricky to measure which is mentioned here beyond that everything else is what we typically measure for most of the project so we'll not look at the measure of effectiveness is one time read and you know, most of the traffic engineers are familiar with those and with that we will conclude this chapter the next uh, chapter is on safety analysis which has become uh, which has become very important for a lot of projects and the major shift in uh, safety analysis is for descriptive analysis is now been done using dashboard automations dashboard automations and predictive analysis is a new concept that is now been applied to most projects so these are two major changes on uh, based on the traditional analysis and we will discuss in great length in chapter 5 here we have also discussed the safety analysis on how to perform the safety analysis different uh, uh, work we do in uh, as a part of safety analysis in chapter 4 of the video series so if you look at uh, one of the playlist uh, chapter 4 which is safety analysis which goes into uh, detail details of how uh, engineers actually perform safety analysis in this uh, tcep manual we will look at we will look at the guidance that are that we need to follow related to safety analysis so these are some suggestions some th there are some information then there are some suggestions in this guidance and then there are some recommendations so some information some suggestions some recommendation and some requirements which we'll look at as a part of chapter 5 our safety analysis concepts 